Welcome to Put a Word on It, a podcast presented by Men of Valor. In each episode, we're going to talk with a different man, but each one with a unique journey from brokenness to freedom. I'm your host, Rudy Kalis. I spent over 40 years as a TV sportscaster, then retired and joined the Men of Valor program as a volunteer. So join the conversation. Reconciling men to God, their families and society. Welcome to another edition of Put a Word on It, brought to you by American Home Design. We thank them so much for their support. A lot of people think you grow up in a big city and boy, you're going to be in trouble and you got all these things that can happen to you as a young kid growing up. Nope. You find out that in the small rural communities, there's as much difficulty and trouble for young kids growing up as there is in the big city. I want you to meet Tommy Lewis, a young man who went through all of that in a small town and now he's come to realization that, oh, I needed my Lord above. Here's Tommy. So you grew up, you went to Upperman High School, yes. right? We flew our helicopter. Now, that's beautiful country up there. I love it. Did you, play, did you play any sports? Played baseball. Did you? What position did you play? Catcher. Best position on the field. What? Yeah. Why? Because you get to watch everybody. Yeah, but you're down on your knees all that's the all right. time, Tommy. That's all right. <laughs> I'm going down on my knees when I'm praying. Oh. Yeah, I grew up. My grandmother, my dad raised me. And uh, my granny, she was one of them fire and brimstone old oh. school people. You know, but then when I got up into high school and running around with people, um, getting freedom to go out because my dad, he was always going working when I was younger. And about 13, 14 year old, he come in off the road. And I went living with him and he just let me be a kid. A good and, kid or a trouble well, kid? Well, I started out as a good kid, but it didn't last long. Why? The world, I guess. I always say we're product of the shadows in our past. People that come into our lives that affected. Did you have that? I was about, let's say, 84, so I was about six-year-old. My grandfather killed a man. Done 17 years in prison. So. How did that affect you? I was pretty rough, you know. He, he was a big part of my life to begin with. But you had to wonder, how in the world can you get to the point of taking a man's life? I've come close a couple of times. Did you have an anger issue? It's a good possibility it boiled back down to that. How did it lead you into trouble? Um, I didn't really get into much trouble. Um, I got a few little driving on suspended because I got my license took when I was 16, 17 for illegal consumption. Um, but I, they'd catch me driving to work or something like that. And, but other than that, I didn't get no real big trouble till 2019. What happened? I got caught with a bunch of dope in my pocket. Meth. Were you using or just selling? Both. Both. Yeah. I was selling to support my habit. How'd that even start? I don't know, 2010, I was coming from McMimble. I'd been over working. And um, this 17-year-old kid come running out of a parking lot and hit us. And I went up. I fractured my C5 and my C6. So <clears throat> they was giving me any kind of pain pill I wanted. After about three, four years of doing that, I went to uh, stop by a buddy of mine's house one day and Trying to find some pills, couldn't find none. This girl sitting there, she's like, oh, I got some meth. I'm like, yeah, I don't want that. You know, I messed with it before here and there. Never, nothing real big. After about three hours, not been able to find that. And I said, well, you know, go ahead, drop me one of them out. Well, next thing I know, it's three days later. I hadn't had no pills. I wasn't pill sick. I'm like, wow, that's pretty good stuff, you know. I just took it around with it. You wind up getting arrested for it. How much time did you do? I got 10 years. I've done uh, about four and a half on it. I still got till December 2029 on pro. How did it affect you? How did it, did it begin to change your life? Because I see this man. Yeah, it, it saved my life. Saved your life. I've had guys tell me that. You might have been dead if it stayed on Oh, yeah, the way I was doing, yeah. How did it save your life, though? 
Well, because as much as I was doing, and it didn't matter who I got it from, as long as they said it was meth and it looked right, you know, I'd do it. And I was shooting probably seven grams a day. Was there a point at which what Grandma was saying way back there all of a sudden started to come into your mind? Um, the last day I got high. Tell May, me about that. May 3rd, 2021. Um, I was working up in Ridgely, which is just right outside of Tiftonville. And I would got up that morning, fixed me a shot of dope, done it. I called my old lady, me and her sitting there arguing. And um, so I put what I had left off in a spoon, fixed it up, hit it. When I stood up, I looked in the mirror, and I said, Lord, help me. Well, about four years. Four hours later, he helped me, all right. The SWAT team showed up. I have heard that kind of stuff before. <laughs> Guys saying, Lord, help me, and it ain't the way you thought he no, was going to help you. No. I thought he might send me preacher to talk to him or something, but, you know, preacher don't carry guns like it. Did it change like that, or did it? Did that begin to Instantaneously. turn? Instantaneously. Instantaneously. How? Just the way I carried myself, the way I acted, is that how you got involved with Men of Valor? Came here to the, get in the program? Um, I was in South Central. Yeah. Um, and Adam Rimmer was coming in. And I would talked to him several times. And I done had my home plan approved to go home. And Adam talked to me. And he's like, well, man, you know, you're doing real good. You know, won't you try this out? And um, so I... Filled out the application, and it got approved. So, wow, you know. And so when I went up for parole, they're like, well, you know, we see you've got your home plan. Um, we got it approved. You, you know, we got to do a home visit. And I said, well, I'm going to change that. You know, I said, I've got accepted men of valor. That's where I want to go. That parole officer, he's like, well, what do you want to go there for? I said, well, honestly, so when I go home, I said, I ain't got nobody that's going to give me money or buy me clothes. I said, they're going to throw me dope. So I hear, go get on your feet. I said, right now, I'm not strong enough spiritually or mentally to go home. And they're like, well, okay, you're approved. Tommy, there's got to be a lot of strength inside of you because there's not all guys that make it through the whole program. There are rules or things you've got to stand by. You kind of find out where you really believe, don't you? Yeah, you do. I'm so proud of that. Let me ask you, you know, our program, the name is Put a Word on It. Yeah. Have you got a word for me? You know, Brady, my word would be peace. That's what you feel now? That's what I feel now. You know, I've got a girl I've been talking to. I met her. She's in jail. She gets out a couple weeks. And um, I didn't realize really how much I'd changed. Um. She's got four daughters. The youngest one's 14. Wow. And I've been talking to them every day for the last three months. Well, her 14-year-old daughter had to write a paper in school and about somebody that has had a negative or a positive impact on their life. And she chose to write about me. Whew. And uh, this is what she wrote. Now, my... This is a 14-year-old girl okay. that I haven't met face-to-face -face, that I've just talked to on the phone. She said, um, I don't speak much about myself nor my home life. If I had to, though, I would tell you about my hopefully soon-to-be stepdad. My mom went to jail almost a year ago for not one of her proudest moments, although she met someone while in there for a friend. They talked through glass and the phone. I would say they have quite the connection, and he is God sent. Then I got to talk to him. He has made such a great impact on my life in so many ways. I wouldn't have learned so much without his influence. I can't wait to see what the future holds for him, my mom, and myself. His presence has truly been a blessing. That means a lot to touch somebody's life. Mm -hmm. Spent 46 years building a reputation of somebody you didn't want to mess with. And that kid run it in one letter. That'll make you want to walk the walk, too. It does. It? You know, I told her mom, I said, you know, 
you've got one kid left in the house. I said, when we get together, I want to give her a standard to live by. You know, I want her to see me opening the doors for you when we're fussing, telling you I love you. You know, I want her to have something to set her standards by with the man that she gets with. You're a good man, Tommy. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Well, I love the word peace. Of course, that's exactly what our Lord wants us to feel inside. We'll go through trouble, but peace means I can make it through with him helping me. And Tommy's such a great story. He's gone through the program here. As you've heard, he's gone through a lot in his life. But I like the fact that he's willing to put his business in the street. He's willing to tell all of us, here's where I now stand. I've found in the years that I've spent in prison that I'm determined to live up to what I'm telling my guys in prison to live up to. You can't blow smoke to people. And I think this is wonderful for him. He'll do it. He'll be a man of faith and he'll, t- he'll touch people's lives. Thanks for joining us. Join us again next time as we put a word on it.